Good evening, popular astronomers. It is Thursday night. It is Pop Astro Live. Please start sharing the stream because the instant you start streaming it, it helps sh sharing it, should I say, it helps our algorithm. So please do that right now. We will play the intro music and here comes the countdown. Plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug, plug the mug. Oh, singing lessons coming on well. Cosmo, I've got a treat for you. Oh, oh, whoops. Oh, Cosmo, where's all my water gone? Hi, Ray Ward. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Alan. Hi, Jim. No water in the mug this week. But wow. Oh, we've got a very sharp piece under the table here. Why do they do that? What is it designed for? We've got precious gems inside the plug the mug. I'm going to talk about this later because I used it for the first time uh, yesterday. It is a sundial and I'm going to talk about that later. So don't worry. I didn't really splash Cosmo. Uh, how can we get Cosmo? There he is. But then my microphone's off my... Oh, you're just going to have to deal with Cosmo being slightly truncated. Oh, thank you, everybody. My favorite show. Oh, have a good night. Thank you. Glad to. Yes, Cosmo has been very far flung this week, Ray. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. Good evening, Vicky. One night you'll spell my name right, Jed. Hi, Vicky. Great to see you again. Lovely. Kathy and the Ragdolls, where you been, Kathy? We've missed you. Uh, everybody's here. All the greats are in the chat room. And if, oh, Jay. Hi, Jay. Um, hello, Vicky and Cosmo from Suffolk. Hello, Jay from Vicky and Cosmo in Anglesey. Okay. Um, just, oh, thank you, Bob. Yes, you did see my YouTube show. Thank you very, very much. I was moonlighting for myself with the space show. Um, it was quite dry and technical, really, but very interesting. Thank you, um, Bob, for contributing. Hi, Vicky and team. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Okay, just a warning. A warning. <laughs> like, that is the incorrect word. It's not a warning. Just a heads up. Next week, I think the show's going to be on Friday instead of Thursday uh, to celebrate the start of the Perseids. Yay! Okay, so, well, that's the heat wave gone. I am wearing warm clothes. My feet are cold. We've had the doors shut today. So probably, I don't know, I'm not sure. Sonia might have a different opinion, but you're probably not really going to get too much observing done over the next couple of nights. So get your astronomy fix indoors with Pop Astro Live. Robin will refresh your knowledge of the summer skies, and that will mean that the constellations and planets are fresh in your head for when it clears up. It's also glowworm season, which is Robin's speciality. Could you see stars rather uh, by looking down? rather than up. Oh, Jed. Ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding. Ding -a ding ding I mean, it has been nearly a year that you've been spelling my name wrong and I've not said anything, but I thought tonight I might just mention it, Jed. I love you so much. So. I love you so much. Uh, hello, Alan. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll let that one go then, shall I? <laughs> Here's sunshine, Sonia. Yeah. Okay. So lots of good stuff happening in the sky at the moment. Saturn is at opposition on Monday, the 2nd of August, with Jupiter reaching opposition on the 20th. So they will both be in the sky for all or most of the night. Some of the best times to see planets occurs when occur when they are at opposition. During opposition, the planet appears at its largest and brightest, and it's above the horizon for much of the night. For stargazers and kitty 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 astrophotographers, they no one does astrophotography like that. Ka -chee, ka -chee, ka -chee. That's more like a paparazzo. This is the time to view and photograph the gas giants. So tonight we've got me, Eleni, Sonia. We are the all-girl, all-star crew. We really are doing it for females in space broadcasting. I bet you can't find too many space or astronomy shows that are headed by three females. There's nearly always a lead man, but we are here to smash it. And we're also here with Cosmo as well. He doesn't count. 
He's been out hunting glowworms too, but on the surface of another planet. He didn't have much luck, but later on, will you be able to guess where he has been? Good evening, Martin. Hello. Good. E Gray here in Southport. Mm. Oh, dear. Yeah, thank you very much. We go, girls. We do. So let me have some water, please. How's my internet tonight? Please tell me how it is. Oh, that's cool. Hey, Vicky. Nice to be back with you. Been enjoying introducing the Northern Night Sky to some Aussies. In real life, have they been here? They're like, what is that? <laughs> Hi, Liam. Her your internet is excellent. No. Okay. That's really interesting because they've put us on a, yet again a different one. And just before I came on, it had dropped down from about 50 to 10 just before I came on. And I had a little hissy fit. I went, hiss, hiss. I had a major hissy fit. But the fact that my internet is excellent is very exciting for me. It's a little bit freezy, but it's watchable and okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Just taking, well, what's happening on the ISS, Liam? Could you please fill us in and let us know, Mr. ISS himself? Okay. Um, It's okay here. Good. My internet is pixelated at times. Uh, <laughs> you've got pixels in your eyes, Ian. That cataract surgery, the surgery, they actually replaced your eye with, um, um. oh, what's that? I need to make the joke. A CCD. No, that's the wrong one. Whatever it is they have in the back of um, space cameras. <laughs> cameras. That's why it's pixelated. Uh, ISS is back under altitude control, but what happened? To oh, okay. What? Have I missed all that? That's because I've been meditating and getting in a zen-like state with Cosmo and writing the show. I've obviously missed all of the excitement. Um, oh, wow. Okay. It lost control of its attitude. It had bad attitude, did it, Liam? Uh, okay, so this evening we've got Eleni, we've got Sonia, we've got Robin. We need helps with helps. We we have got jobs available at the um, at the society, and we're going to be talking about that later. So if you want a foot up into the world of astronomy, publishing, and social media, keep on watching until later because we have got some pretty awesome placements. For a young, not young, sorry, that is complete discrimination. I did not mean that. I meant up and coming and budding astronomy enthusiasts of all ages. Okay. Cosmo looks in great form, but it's good to see the girls in charge. We sure are. Right. I can see Robin shifting around in his chair down there. Uh, are you ready to come on, Robin? Is it? He's nodding. Here he comes. Right. Let me just get rid of the banner. Girls in charge. He's at my beck and call. Um, right, okay. Three, two, one. Robin. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi there. Robin, Hi. long time no see. How are you, yeah, old friend? Oh, we've got the backdrop on as well. That's good news. That's fine. Oh, I, I forgot to mention. It looks like a blank screen from what I see at the moment. The, the, the internet isn't too good. The camera isn't too good at picking up a, a wide brightness range but i'm by the river blackwater and if you could see see it let me just tilt it up a bit no it's not going to show it is it you've got a nice view over the river blackwater in the background there that's in essex can... for anyone who doesn't know that oh it's lovely i can see the um the beautiful willow i forgot to mention i'm in a caravan awning right um, so I'm kind of inside and outside all at the same time. It's very nice and very au naturel, Robin. And your backdrop is beautiful too. If I move out of the way, the camera might um, just pick up. No, it hasn't. Oh, yeah, no, it did. Yeah, we got it. We got yeah, it. Yeah. It's, it's sort of trying to balance the two brightnesses. But it can, oh, yes, there you go. A bit of the, the, you might see the odd ship go sailing past uh, as we talk. But uh, who knows? Um, very good. Hi, Vernon. Good to have you back. I remember you from the old days of yore when you were a regular contributor. Welcome back to Thursday night. So, Robin, what have you been up to? Well, I actually managed to get a look at the stars last night. And Whoa. I know it's been it's been uh, rather funny weather, hasn't it? It's been hot and then it was hazy and we didn't get very many clear nights. But it's possible to see. You, you never know with this sort of funny weather. 
you can get really clear skies in between some really, uh, really just just clouds and thunderstorms. But when it actually clears, it can be crystal clear. So don't give up on it and keep an eye on the on the sky. Uh, you might get wet grass to walk through, as I did last night, uh, to, uh, to to get to the uh, your prime observing spot. And the moon is pretty well out of the way, and it will be moving out of the sky. It was it was about uh, well after full last night. It was. It was sort of late gibbous, and it's going to get smaller and smaller and more into the morning sky as the next week goes on. So it is actually a good time to try and observe if you can. And as I say, these the skies can be clear. I'm sure Sonny will tell us more about this later on. But the skies can be clear in between those those rain showers, and you, you can get a, a good, uh, really transparent night if you're lucky. That's great news. So what did you see in the sky last night, Robin? Well, I've actually got a video to show you. If and, and, and It lasts about four minutes. So it's one I recorded last night, actually, out under the stars. So now you told me that there was a way of sharing a video on. Do I go to share? Is that the way to do it? Yeah, all very exciting now, Robin. Yeah. Uh, so um, I'll share video just go file. to share yeah, video yeah. file and it should pull it up from your computer should you right. have it there I'll waiting. Yeah, let me just find the right um, uh, right folder. It should be, oh, yes, pictures, videos. Where's videos gone? Videos. Right, temp. All right, any minute now, traps. Don't give up. Now, why isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's showing. It's it's the, the file type that's, uh, that's not showing itself at the moment. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah, it won't show MTS files, which is what I've got. No matter, I've got it on the internet. So, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, it won't show MTS files. This this wonderful file system. And then let's I, I'll I'll just look at all files and see if it will play it. Um, which one is it? Your browser is having trouble showing your video. No, it won't work. So let's find the one on the internet now. So if I go to share and share screen and school screen sharing tips, that's fun. <laughs> the best step is don't bother. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It's um, uh, just while you're fiddling, Robin, uh, Michael says the southern equatorial belt on Jupiter appears to have faded again from my observations. Do you agree? I, I don't know. I haven't been I haven't been able to look at it through. I haven't got a telescope with me here tonight, so who knows? Um, uh, I just lost everything at the moment. I'll share screen and I'll find the right right one to those find. SBA t those SBA t shirts are actually really good. I think I got sent one and it was about a size two. Um, and I got actually got stuck in it trying it on. Um, oh, that was a sweatshirt thing. But yeah, I need one of those, Robin. Well, th this is a, a special edition, so uh, I, I've got the right file here. So let me let me see what happens if I try playing it. Ooh, Does that show? Can you see it? Right. Okay. I'll shut up now, and you can. I might pause the video when I need to. Sky down at the uh, south there. Oh, Robin. Really quite bright. Is it coming out dark? I can't see it. No, yeah, I've just got your files. That's all right. I can see. Oh, Do you want to try? Right. Okay. Let I can me... see the files on your computer, so... Right, okay. So I started playing it, so I've got to find the right screen to share, haven't I? Bear with us, folks. The SEB has faded at some longitudes, but seems a little better form preceding the great red spot. NEB, I'm assuming that means northern equatorial belt. Very brown. Yeah, Jupiter has been acting up a bit recently, and that's what observers love, isn't it? Uh, something different to view. And uh, let me see. Now, I need to choose the right window to share. So let me go back to stop sharing and then start sharing again. Yeah, I think you need to go to Chrome tab, Robin. That's what I do. Yeah, sure. Share um, screen. Click the one that says sound playing or something. Chrome tab. Share. 
Right. So hey, I can see something. This is the, the Vimeo file. Let's try that. Oh, something is happening. We're nearly there. I want it full screen. Oh, please work. Sky down in the uh, south there. And you can see I can't see anything on that at all. Can you? Yeah, it's showing, Robin. Is it? Right. But I can't see. It. Can you turn it up, please? Oh, yes, there we go. As you can see, um, not as low as they were a year or two ago, but oh, sorry. low in the sky. And Jupiter acts up more than the screen share software. You've got one. I'm going to pan up now. And one constellation we can see there is the constellation of Aquarius. And the most obvious pattern is this little triangle of or uh, group of four stars there, which um, mark the Can you see the stars? Aquarius. Mm, I'll make it full screen. Can you turn up the volume, Robin? Yeah. Moving up, and this is the area. Oh, he's. Field of view, right at the top is the star Deneb, and over to the right of that is the star Vega in Lyra. Deneb is the swan, and you can see it as a big cross in the sky. It's also known as the Northern Cross, and the Milky Way runs right down through it. And I'll just change the shutter speed a bit so hopefully you'll see some of the milky way there just about shows up here go back to 25th and shows you more of what you'd see with the naked eye okay i'll just pause it there can you can you see the the stars on your <laughs> I don't know whether it's dandruff on my laptop, but I do have a giant um a giant ring light in front of me. But I think they're there. I think it's there. Yeah. They're not clean. Then when I'm when I'm polishing my screen, the bits are staying on the screen, and I guess that means it's stars. Yeah. I, I'm having trouble seeing them. Um tell you what, let that's let's just um I, I'm I'm not sure if how, how well it's going to be visible to everybody. So maybe I'll just play. It's only lasting a couple more minutes and then yes, please then carry on. See. Yeah, if it doesn't disturb the disturb the soundtrack too much, just above Aquila, you can see a nice little pattern of stars in the shape of an arrow, and this is actually the constellation of Sagittar, the arrow, and that's one of the objects that looks really one of the constellations that looks to be right, really like what it's meant to be, and a bit to the right of that. That's Sagittarius. To the left of that, to the left, I should have said, is the constellation of Delphinus, Del the dolphin, which again looks very like what it's meant to be. As we move up to the higher stars, we can see again the Northern Cross there, and the star more or less in the centre there is the star Albario, the of the, the star at the head of the Swan of Cygnus. And that's a lovely double star, which you can actually see as a double with binoculars. One star is slightly bluish and the other one is slightly yellowish. And I'll leave it to you to look to find out which is which. And Vega there is in the constellation of Lyra. And this is the only musical instrument in the sky and um, it is quite a small constellation but a few interesting objects in it the star to the upper left of vega is what we call the double double and if you look through a uh, well if you've got really good eyesight you can probably see it as a double star but if you look through a telescope you can see that each star itself is a double so that's what we call the double double. Now the wind is getting up a bit, so I'll pack it in for tonight. But I uh, hope this has given you a kick, quick look at some things to look at in the night sky in August. 
Well, well Robin, have... you know what? That was so lovely. And it's just made my heart really ache because one of the things I love in astronomy most is being stood next to a group of astronomers who know their way around the sky and the relaxation of having somebody point you around the sky. My lovely um, Mid Cheshire Astronomy Group. Malk, hello, everybody. I brought a bit of a tear to my eye because it's been so long since I've done that and everybody else. I miss that, Robin. That was beautiful. A really lovely video. Quite well, nostalgic. Well, I'll be putting it on the SBA website in the next day or two, hopefully with a bit of editing and with the patterns of the constellations on there. So if you missed it tonight, it will be on the SBA website in a day or two. And one of the things that I'll talk about the things that I showed there, um, Jupiter and Saturn, as we've said, are really obvious at the moment, way down in the south, just sort of scraping the treetops, the chimney tops. So they are um, really fairly obvious if you look towards the south. That was recorded about one o'clock this morning. So if you are looking when it gets dark, there'll be more over to the east, but they certainly do start rising. Jupiter is the most obvious. It's really bright at the moment. And if you're looking over to the south or the southeast, you can't miss it. And, and unless, I, I can't remember if the ISS is around at the moment, uh, you, you might get the odd satellite getting in the way. As indeed on that video, it's amazing when you do a video or you look up the sky, how many satellites are going across, particularly at this time of year. The reason being that the sun is not very low below the horizon, even in the south of England, it's still illuminating the sky or the atmosphere, the upper atmosphere, uh, the, the regions where the satellites are orbiting. And so they are still in full sunlight. And even without Starlink, the number you can see is just extraordinary. I must say that the the wind was a bit troublesome last night. It was very obvious on the microphone. And even though I, I, I sounded a bit breathy because I had the microphone really close to my mouth because of the, the, the wind background, but uh, uh, not much I can do about that. But uh, it, it was, it, if you can get a, a good windless night to view, it will improve your comfort enormously. <clears throat> so we looked at Jupiter and Saturn. I haven't seen them through a telescope myself because I don't have one here where I am at the moment. But they are worth observing if you can get up late enough to, to see them, stay up late enough to see them. And uh, Jupiter's appearance at the moment, from what I believe, is, is different from its usual. Usually there are two belts, the uh, North and South Equatorial Belt, and they're both equally, equally dark. But this time, only one of them is really as dark and the other one has, has faded somewhat, as we've been hearing. Now, there are a lot of deep sky objects to see in the in the sky at the moment. I pointed out the constellations of uh, Aquarius. Now, this is a great time to try and find, if you've got one of those dark skies, the Helix Nebula in Aquarius. Now, it's a difficult thing to locate. I've only ever seen it once visually through binoculars. And that's when a few years ago, I went to the Burren Star Party in Ireland, in the west of Ireland, and we had really dark skies. And with binoculars, just ordinary, I think there were um, 10 by 50 binoculars, I was just able to see the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the Helix Nebula. It's about the size of the full moon. It's one of the closest planetary nebulae to us. And you would think, well, well, that's, that's great. I think the magnitude of it, if you, if you sum all the light together, I think the magnitude is about seven or eight, something you, you think, oh, magnitude eight, the size of the full moon. I could see that, no trouble. But you'd be wrong because that's eighth magnitude spread out over the size of the full moon. And that is not easy to see. And you do need the really dark sky. I won't attempt to describe how to find it. You need to do a lot of star hopping to locate it in the sky. But it's well worth looking for you for. And you feel a, a real a real glow of pride when you found it because it's such a notoriously difficult object to locate, particularly from the UK where we don't have the best skies. Another planetary nebula, which is much more easy to find, is the Dumbbell Nebula M27. Now that is at the opposite end of the scale. Although it is quite close, it's also a lot smaller and it's really much easier to see. You can see it in, in binoculars, not very well, but you can see it. And I mentioned the constellation of Sagittarius, the arrow, and that's the 
the key to finding it. Uh, you find the you make a little right angle with the the two uh, end stars of Sagittarius and go up a bit, and that's where the dumbbell nebula is. That's my key to finding it anyway. Another elusive object is the North American nebula, which a lot of people say they can't see, but there's a tip that I can give you to finding it. And that is, yeah, it is, it's a, it's a wonderful object in a photograph. You've probably seen the pictures of it looking just like the, con the, the uh, continent of North America with the, the Gulf of Mexico and Florida and the East Coast and then up into Canada. It really is a dead ringer for the shape of North America. But it's not that easy to spot. And the photographs show it as looking uh, deep red in the light of hydrogen, hydrogen alpha. Now, our eyes are just not sensitive, uh, particularly sensitive to that light, unless it's really bright. People have hydrogen alpha telescopes for looking at the sun. And even then, with the, um, with the, with, with the sun, you, you'd have to dim the light quite a lot to, to see it. But you can see the light of hydrogen alpha. But when it's coming from a, a planetary nebula or whatever, it really, uh, or, or a, a nebula like North America, it really is not all that clear to see. And the trip is that you've got to look for, not for the bright bit, but for the dark bit, the the bit which highlights the, uh, which is at the uh, one side of the east coast of North America. And once you've found that, the rest of the nebula starts to become obvious and you know that you're in the right spot. It's literally just to the east of, of Deneb. So you find Deneb in binoculars and look to the east. You need a really good clear sky. And I promise you, if you've got a good clear sky and you follow that tip, you will start to see the North America nebula. And so this is the time of year to see it where it's pretty well overhead. So those are two objects or three objects which you can start looking for at this time of, of year in the deep sky, as well as Jupiter and Saturn. And with the Milky Way up there, you can also see, and in that video you can spot it as well, the great rift which runs down the center, uh, center line of the Milky Way. And if it weren't for all the dust and gas in the middle of the in the middle of the Milky Way, we are sandwiched right in the in the in the central plane of the Milky Way. And if it weren't for all the dust and gas, we would be able to see a lot more stars and a lot brighter view of the Milky Way. But it's a sort of, it really is hiding the central part. So when we're looking at another galaxy, we're looking at it, if we're doing it face on, we can see the central part much more clearly. If you're looking at a galaxy like M81, then you can see the central area much more clearly than, than our own galaxy. But it's because of we're, we're surrounded by all the dust and, dust and gas from which the stars form. So it's it's not unwelcome. That's what's why we're here, all that dust and gas. Don't knock it. But uh, that's, that is obscuring our view of the central part of the Milky Way. And it always amuses me when I see artworks of galaxies up in the sky. And um, you, 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 you've seen all of them. They, they show a picture of a spiral galaxy as seen from a, a nearby planet. But the fact is that our eyes just aren't really sensitive enough to see the galaxy as it's depicted in an artwork. I'm not knocking artists. They, they really, if they showed it as it looked in the sky, no one would buy their picture. They will say, well, you know, brighten it up a bit. So that's what they've done. But really the, um, the, 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 the appearance of a galaxy in the sky is no brighter than the Milky Way. We're actually in a galaxy and you need to be in a good dark sky to see it. And all the pictures that we, all those lovely, long exposure photographs we've shown, which show the Milky Way arching over the sky. We never really see it that, that brilliantly. And it's always a, a gray um, a, a gray path of light with all the, the, the details are much more smeared out than we can actually see. But the great rift is something you can see the, the line of dust and gas in the Milky Way. Oh, Robin, that is so uh, incredibly knowledgeable. Thank you for reminding me why I love astronomy so much. Now then, why can we see stars in the summer by looking down as opposed to looking up? Ah, yes. I think you're talking about glowworms, aren't you? Yes, this is the time of year when you can see glowworms. <clears throat> and it is there are far more of these things around than you, you would think. Uh, that they I won't risk sharing screen again to show you a picture of one. 
But if you go to my website, glowworms.org.uk, you can see a picture of one and you can see the gallery of, of pictures that we've put on there. Now, they're not worms, they're beetles. And this is the time when of year when the female glowworms uh, shine their lights to attract the male glowworms. I always liken it to what we used to call a dance. I don't know what young people call it these days, but uh, all the girls... Twerking. Twerking, Robin. Sorry? Twerking. Oh, <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> anyway, all... You're taking the booty. <laughs> All, all, the, all the girls would, would make themselves as glamorous as possible. And that's what the female glowworms do. They, they, they shine their lights. And if, if I don't do it, somebody else will, will say it. And there's a little rhyme which says, um, "Why I, I'd love to be a glowworm. A glowworm's never glum. Who would be unhappy when the, sun, when the light shines out your bum? When the sun shines out your bum? Got it wrong. But that's what people <laughs> say about glowworms. And people are always telling me, did you hear that one? Yes, I know it. Thank you very much. So now everyone knows it. Uh, but that's what they do. Oh, yes, you've got the Global Survey hem page there. Well done. Thank you. And you can see there she is. She's a little beetle. She's about, um, she's not small. She's actually about um, 25 millimeter, an inch long, uh, the, the larger ones. And she's um, she's uh, turning, turning her tail upwards and it's glowing. It's glowing with a sort of very cool light. You know those glow sticks you get in fun fairs and so on, and you break them in, in half and they, they glow. Well, that's yeah. what's happening in, in the glowworm. It's mixing two chemicals which, which mix together and it's producing a very, very efficient light. And that's what's happening. And they, the females do it at this time of year. And uh, what they actually do, and there's, a, there's another pop music reference here, who wrote the line in a in a pop music uh, song, pop song, sung by the Beatles and sung by some, the, and not and also by the composer who wrote the song that contains the line, "She wriggles like a glowworm." Oh wow! I don't know. Chuck Berry. Oh, I seem to recall. Roll over Beethoven. Listen to "Roll Over Beethoven" and you'll hear that line. She wriggles like a glowworm, and that's what a glowworm does. She moves her tail from side Correct. to side. So that if she's hidden by a grass stem or a bit of foliage, it helps her to be seen by the flying male. She can't fly. She just sits on the ground, attracting um, uh, attracting the, uh, the the males who are flying around. The scruffy little males, they're all black and, uh, and much smaller, and they fly around to try and find her. Now, you can see them in a huge number of places. I remember I sent you a link to a, to a, a, a caravan site just the neighbouring caravan site to you, I think, in Triatha, um, where there are glowworms seen. Um, and I don't know if you managed to get along there, but they were there. I might go That's out good. looking. I might go out looking tonight, Robin. So, like, do you have to take a telescope to see them on the ground? Certainly not. No, you just use your eyes. And they're really quite bright when you see them. <clears throat> and um, But they, they are in a lot of places around the UK, a huge number of areas. There are about... Um, 5,000 places where you can see them that we know of and counting because people are finding new sites for them all the time. They are, the only place where they're not easily visible is Lancashire, but they are on Anglesey, they're in Cheshire, they're in um, all over the Chilterns, they're in Kent, they're in Devon, they're in Cornwall, they're in Norfolk, they're all the way up into Scotland, they can be seen. <laughs> Any so, specific any specific type of grassland, Robin, or I just went to pl plug in my phone actually to charge it because I fancy going off out looking for them tonight and it's nice to have a bit of charge on my phone to do that. But uh, any particular grassland? Uh, wherever it's sort of fairly undeveloped grassland, the, the, you won't find them on, on, on pasture land very much, but weedy, scrubby bits of land, that's what they love, where the grassland is quite poor and... Um, a lot of roadside verges have got them, um, despite the fact that people are roaring past in their cars all the time. Then they would never notice them because they are just completely drowned out by the um, by, by the by the uh, by the lights of cars. The Great Orm, not far from you, is is a well known place for glowworms. Up in the north, they tend to be petering out a bit now, but uh, you can still see them probably. And um, down in the South and maybe even up. I, I know people have reported seeing them in Scotland, in uh, near Oban, for example, and um, uh, 
well, um, the other places I can't remember now, uh, where they can be seen right up until August. So have a look. Mm. If it's sort of, um, if it's rather scrubby area, then it may well contain glowworms. And although they are, they're not uncommon, they are locally, you've got to know exactly where to find them. So you won't find them until you go and look. So rather than casting your eyes up, look down and you may see a bright, bright greenish point of light in the grass or in a hedge or something like that. Oh, glowworm. Robin, do you think it's too late for me to go out, too late in the year for me to go out looking tonight then? You might well see them. I would, well, I gave you the, the grid reference to, to go and have a look. Uh, so go and see if you can find them. They could well be around. That the, 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 There are quite a few around. I can send you another grid reference. If people want to know where they are, I've got a, uh, if you go to my the, the website, glowworms.org.uk, and just uh, just below that, the, the, the heading, there is a, a link to a blog. And we keep that as up to date as possible. The last um, the last date on it, I think, was about the 23rd of, uh, of July, where people are seeing them and a grid reference. And you can click on the grid reference and find a map. So go to that website. And you can find see where there are glowworms anywhere near you, but that's not an exhaustive list. There are plenty of other places where they can be seen. Oh, Robin, thank you so much. Um, can we just ask how you we pronounce your surname? Schedule. Oh, I always thought it was Snest. What? Snest. Where'd you get that from? <laughs> Robin Snest. Well, yeah, yes. Cosmo made me say that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> you know, I was talking about constellations earlier on. One Don't constellation we are missing in the sky, and it uh, you, you might like to, to find a, a combination of stars, is the, the constellation of the mithering, pestering sloth. So, uh -huh. I think that's in the Southern Hemisphere because it's upside down. Yeah. Right, Robin, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for all your wonderful knowledge okay. and see you soon. Bye. 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 The mither and pester in sloth. Speaking of which, he's going to be coming up with us in a minute. Um, right, okay. So we're going to go over to Eleni in one moment. Let's have a look at the comments. I'm sorry Robin didn't answer your question, but maybe he's still there. Are there the same glowworms as in America? Thanks, Robin. Very interesting talk. He's a very interesting man. Poor old Cosmo making me say duff jokes. Robin Snest. Come on, that's a great gag. Right, Eleni, you're on in three, two, one. Hi, Eleni. Hi, everyone. Um, I, I just couldn't help myself. I saw, um, you know, the question that the first person asked, if fireflies are the same as glowworms, I had exactly the same question and I Googled it. So I found out that they are like same, um, same family, but fireflies, the males and the females look similar and they both can fly, but glowworms, the males can fly, but the females can't. So that's what Google, a quick Google just um, said. I was really curious, though. <laughs> who, needs, who needs Robin when you've got Google? <laughs> Only no, joking. he's amazing. He, he's, he's got so much knowledge. I don't know how can it fit in his head. It's, it's a lot. And how he, he can remember all of that stuff, I have no idea. I think he's got just got an upgraded memory card compared to us, Eleni. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Aww. Now, I'm on my phone, so there is a very small chance that there might be a bit of lag, like a bit of a connection problem. So apologies if I, you know, if I freeze or if I talk and my face just doesn't move. It's just because I'm on my phone. OK, let's see if we've got this right. How's that? Look, you're there, Eleni. OK, um, I'm going to disappear off, Perfect. but just say next slide and I will. Cosmo will press the button for you. Perfect. All right. Don't say so, you've got to say next. Um, you, you've got to say next slide, so Cosmo. Say next slide, Cosmo. Otherwise, it won't change. So remember that. Got it. <laughs> okay. Got it. Next slide, Cosmo. Cool. All right. So, I've got quite a, a few interesting things for you tonight. So, again, I'm going big to small. Like I like to cover everything. The big, big, big things, small, small things. Uh, so this first one is about um, a fast uh, radio, uh, sorry, uh, gamma ray burst, sorry, uh, GRB. So 
these events are very energetic, so they release tremendous amounts of energy. But good evening, everyone. But they last for a very short amount of time. So we're talking about a few seconds. And the way they are classified, uh, there are two categories. And they're, they're not particularly well understood anyway. Um, so the mechanisms are not well understood. But for now, um, or up until now, the categories were A, that you have short gamma ray bursts that are maximum two seconds uh, of duration. And these um, were associated with uh, the merging of a binary neutron star system. And then you have longer gamma ray bursts, which are a few seconds, um, and they were associated with uh, supernova explosions. However, this particular uh, GRB, um, was the shortest one ever observed, so it was 0.6 seconds long, and it was um, identified as a, a GRB coming from a supernova, which is completely unexpected. So it, it goes to show that they don't exactly follow the, the rules and the boxes that they're put into, and uh, it started uh, sparking conversation again about what are these events and how we can better understand them because if you can have a really short gamma ray burst which is typically associated with the merger of a, a neutron star binary and then you find out that this particular gamma ray burst is definitively coming from a supernova explosion then there are holes in our understanding and we need to figure out how to patch these holes and fill them in with the right knowledge. Um, so I thought that was a pretty interesting thing and gamma ray bursts are mysterious anyway. So this is uh, a little uh, bit to add to that mystery I think. Uh, now let's see if we can do this. Uh, Cosmo, no, what was it? Next slide Cosmo. Did I remember that correctly? Yes, I did. Nice. So we're going to um, frozen clays in Mars. Now, I mentioned something about that maybe three weeks ago or so, uh, where there was a lot of heated discussion about uh, the reflections, the radar reflections uh, beneath the south um, ice cap of Mars. Um, and for a while, there was a theory that that could be bodies of liquid water, uh, but the, the argument is um, problematic. That there are things that cannot be explained using that um, theory. And at the time, like three to four weeks ago, uh, I remember saying that the potential candidates are um, more likely some kinds of clay. So now we have uh, a very strong paper with very uh, strong evidence that it's almost definitely a type of clay, mineral clay, which I'm not exactly sure how to say that. I suspect smictite. I'm not sure if it's me or sme, but if anybody knows, please let me know. Um, so it turns out that in their paper, uh, these scientists from, uh, let's see if I remember that, that's, that's the Institute for Planetary Science, um, they are almost entirely certain that the reflections seen um, by Marsis, which is the um, radar instrument that took the second picture that we have on the right, are actually almost definitely um, this mineral type of clay, um, which is really interesting because a lot of people for a while have been thinking, um, you know, it's, we, we have been leaning in that idea that it is water. Um, it's quite interesting and um, provocative even to, to think that it might be uh, something entirely different like clay. So I'm looking forward to see um, how this is going to evolve. Like I'm really interested in that clay, mineral clay idea. Uh, don't understand much about geology, but it's still very, very interesting. Uh, Cosmo, next slide. 
Did I flip that? I flipped it. Never mind. Hi, Cosmo. Could you please give me the next slide, you adorable sloth? Yay. <laughs> right. So, in the space news and, and the weather, um, we have an aurora alert. Now, not 100%, because we did have a magnetic filament erupting yesterday, um, and, and it's labeled at the moment as a near miss, uh, but, but these things are very malleable and forecast can change and, and it might actually hit us uh, well and proper. And if it does, we will have a very beautiful aurora. Uh, and this time the picture I have on the right is actually taken, was it yesterday the 28th? Yes, it was taken yesterday and it was taken in Canada. And what's very interesting, um, I'm not so sure how well people can see it, but at the top of the of the arc of the aurora, there is this bluish glow, and this is very rare. Uh, it's very rare to be able to observe it, and apparently it's it's some type of scattering from moonlight, and it only appears at the very top of the aurora, and sometimes it's uh, overwhelmed by all of the other colors and not easily seen, which is really cool. And last but not least, Cosmo, would you be kind and give me the next slide, please? Yeah. Oh, he's been such an incredible helper, I have to say. Oh, he, right. he's, really so, naughty. he's really naughty for me because he usually jumps all over the keyboard and messes my microphone <laughs> up. He obviously really <laughs> likes you. He, he's really sweet. He's very sweet. So <laughs> this particular picture, I think, is phenomenal. Now, if anybody looks it up on um, astronomy picture of the day, they will see it rotated um, 90 degrees up. But I had to rotate it like that to fit it on the slide. Uh, so apologies for that. Now, what we're looking here, what we're looking at here is um, I keep trying to reach for my mouse and try to point at the screen, but I can't. Um, so we're looking at the Cygnus, the Swan constellation. And in particular, we're looking at this nebula at the, a little bit off center, which is called uh, uh, the Tulip Nebula, which is, I think, pretty accurate because it does look like a, a tulip, I think. Um, and what's interesting about this beautiful, beautiful nebula is that it's um, actually, um, what is Cosmo doing? I can see like a little bit of a, of a movement and it's really distracting my eyes. Cosmo, are you really interested in what Naughty. I'm saying? Is that it? He, he's, he's really, he wants to give you a kiss. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait until I finish that, so so I don't get distracted by <laughs> by the the movement. So <laughs> what we're seeing here, so the tulip nebula, what we're seeing is actually emission from different um, gases that are being warmed up and ionized, and they're being uh, ionized by stellar nursery nearby. So young stars emitting ultraviolet radiation, and they make all the gases in the nebula glow. And we have gases like sulfur, hydrogen, and oxygen producing the different colors. Um, and what we can also see, how can I say that now? It, at the very end of, of the picture, at the right-hand side, in the middle, there is a very subtle bluish um, shockwave. And this is actually by Cygnus X1, which is a microquasar, and apparently one of the most powerful in uh, Earth's night sky. Um, and what we see there, that's, that's the shock from, from that quasar. I'm not so sure if people can see it. I can see it in my phone, even if it's really small, so hopefully everyone else can see it as well. Um, so yeah. yes, um, I will leave you with that. I think it's a stunning picture. Um, most beautiful planetary nebula I've ever seen, if I'm honest. It does indeed look like a flowering tulip, like a blossoming tulip. Um, yeah, and I will leave you with that. I hope you enjoyed it.
as always Mwah. if you have questions put them on facebook Mwah. and i will make sure to answer them um if i forget i might answer them tomorrow Eleni, that's so lovely. Thank you so much. And Cosmo, he was, likes trying to distract you, but his intentions are good, really. <laughs> he succeeded. He succeeded. I kept, I kept catching him from like my eye, and I was like, mm -mm, I can't stay focused. I can't stay focused. <laughs> uh, Eleni, thank you so much for putting so much effort into a wonderful look. Uh, uh, oh, Michael says Cygnus X1 is my next target when it's clear. Bob says, Go yeah, for more it. amazing Eleni. Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad you are enjoying this. We love it, Eleni, and we all love you too. Have Bye, a Eleni. lovely evening, and I hope you see some, uh, not fireflies, glowworms. That's the one. See you soon. Bye. See you. Oh, she's gone. She's gone. I think I put her off a bit too early then. Sorry, Eleni, but you're amazing. Okay, everybody, it's Pop Astro Live. Uh, Summer Skies and Glowworms special. Okay. Um, now, we have got a number of roles, voluntary roles, I hasten to add, available at the SPA. But if you are a budding astronomer or uh, an astrophysics student or you're looking to break through onto the scene, we've got some fantastic vacancies here where you could really, really make your CV look amazing. So Robin has asked me to plug this. Plug the vacancies, plug the vacancies, plug the vacancies, plug the vacancies, plug the vacancies. Publicity officer. Currently Robin, but he doesn't have time to devote to it. If you want to be our publicity officer, you need to be in charge of our advertising, mostly the print advertising, to create new print ads and ideas for ads, send stories about the society to the media, and crucially, get to grips with online advertising. You should also feed stories into our social media channels, so you need to have a good knowledge of what's going on in the sky and be able to spot topics to write about. The successful applicant would have a good knowledge of the amateur scene and also be literate so they don't they don't create holes in our ads. Look, this is why I do this broadcast. I do it to cut my teeth and to give me the practice that I need to fulfill my ambitions, which is to be an astronomy and space broadcaster. The SPA is a fantastic place to start out. Cut your teeth. Don't make any howlers. But then once you've mastered this for a couple of years, you are going to have it on the CV and be able to take it to some amazing high profile companies that will hopefully pay you big bucks because they do. There is big money in space and science. So you heard it here first. We also need a graphic illustrator. Someone skilled with computer graphic design software, such as Photoshop or Illustrator, to create ads and other material. Advertising manager to seek more advertising for the pages of popular astronomy and to make sure ads are provided in time. Massively valid experience if you are looking to break into the space science astronomy marketing world. Trust me, there's good money to be made. Thank you, Eleni. Thank you, Fern, and good to see you back on a Thursday. Okay. Uh, I think we're going to get Sonia on because I do love her so. Are you ready, Sonia? Coming to you in three, two, one. Sunshine, Hi. Sonia. Hello, love. Hello. How are you tonight? I'm happy. It's nearly Friday. Yeah. Yay. Good, good, good. How's your new job going, baby? Really good, yeah. Really well. The weeks are just and days are just flying by with it. Yes. Oh, that's so nice, Sonia, because I know you were sad when I first met you a couple of months ago. Yes, a lot more happy. And people are saying I am so much happier. And they can see it in my attitude and how I just stand down on a daily basis. Oh, I love a little success story, Sonia. <laughs> are you wearing – that's a nice fluffy top you've got on. It's actually my dressing gown. <laughs> I'm a bit – I was a bit nippy, so I put my dressing down, gown on. Well, it's getting we cold heat, now. We had a heat wave for about two weeks, and then it's just gone. I know. It's always the same when the kids go, when the kids are off school, the weather changes. 
Well, Sonia, as it actually happens, I got you on a little bit early. I'm going to do Cosmo now, but we'll do both together if you want, because he's been away on his travels, and it's always nice to have you as my co-presenter. So let me just have a think now. We're going to play Cosmo's little music. Uh, Where is he? Um, Here comes Cosmo. He's been flying around the solar system, or maybe a bit further. But to the casual observer, he's a mithering, pestering sloth. Where have you been to this week, Cosmo? Cosmo, where have you been? Three clues. Only answer after the clues. Cosmo over and out. Cosmo! Cosmo. (laughs) So, Sonia, um, it wasn't hot enough for Sonia. Uh, Not Sonia, Cosmo. And you both mixed up. So my, we had our um, we had our astronomy Zoom last night, and one of the chaps, John, got me mixed up with Alexa. Oh no! <laughs> he went, Vicky, play a dog barking. I was like, I'm Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I have just called you Cosmo though. So, oh, Sonia, look, we're all three of us are all wearing lovely fluffy clothes. We are, aren't we? Oh, snuggly, snuggly, snuggly. So it wasn't hot enough for Cosmo this week. He's been somewhere slightly warmer than even it has been today, uh, the the past few days on Anglesey. Um, Oh, Jed says, evening, Sonia, your moon images and clouds were brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. (laughs) Okay. Now, where Cosmo has been this week, Sonia, uh, I found some startling facts out about this place that I didn't know. So you're going to get some good astronomy space facts now. Are you ready for Ooh. them? Go on. Okay. Now, what's that, Cosmo? He doesn't know when his birthday is anymore. <sighs> it's, it's mucked up his calendar. What's that? You, not every 365 days. It's every 88 days now. His birthday is every 88 days. Oh. Ex- I know that's a lot of presents, Sonia. We, we need to backdate back- a, back a lot of birthday cards for him. But to add more confusion, a year is 88 days, yet a day is 176 Earth days. <laughs> How does that sound? So a year is 88 Earth days, yet a day is 176 Earth days. So this is already an unusual place. Okay, it's the second hottest planet. So there you go. The second hottest planet. (laughs) Alexa, get my telescope out. (laughs) And then the third clue. It has the most eccentric orbit in the solar system and the least circular of all the planets. Where could he have gone to? Sonia, are you going to hazard an educated guess? Uh, uh, Mercury. (laughs) Well, yeah. Oh, look, we've got three answers here. All say Mercury. Is that where you've been? 300 degrees. That's why they call him Mr. Fahrenheit. So don't stop him now because he's having a good time having a good time it's cosmo freddie mercury he has been to mercury they've all all, they're all the astronomers they're a clever bunch though we do have a relatively no one's even got a wrong answer tonight no one's even got a wrong answer mercury it's this planet furthest away from pluto or closer to the sun a battered world covered in overlapping basins soaring cliffs and occasional smooth plains like he's been waxed <laughs> everyone's got it right so sunshine sonia tell us about oh, on you want your little weather song don't you i do let's get your little weather song where's it gone um there's so many on here now here we go Will it be cloudy? Will it be sunshine? Will there be hurricanes? Sonia's been checking out the jet stream and the humidity. Is it safe to get my telescope out or will it blow over and bend? Well, Sonia's here with all the answers, my starry-eyed astronomer friend. Yay! What have you done to the weather, Sonia? Oh, I know. Well, we're going to concentrate more on the weather this evening as we do have a storm approaching us um, this evening through tonight. We have Storm Everett coming over. Um, It should have now hit the southwest. 
Um, that's joking? where it's going to hit worst is the southwest. Um, they can expect 75 miles an hour winds down there. Um, we will get the rain as well and some winds, but it won't be as bad as what the southwest are expecting. So it is a yellow warning for wind and amber for rain at the moment. Um, it is very unusual, uh, especially August time, as we probably would expect this in autumn. But there are signs that could be the trend to come in the near future with climate change. Um, it was also when I heard on the um, radio earlier as well, we could expect temperatures in summer to even be 40 degrees in the near future with, with how climate change is happening at the moment. Um, even Cornwall, some campers, um, campsites have had to move um, campers to another field um, so they can be less exposed in parts of their campsites. So it is looking particularly bad for the southwest this evening. It may have already hit there. Um, so it's southwest, um, the south of England going across to southeast England. That's where the winds are going to hit. You will get some extremely big tidal waves. So if you are going out photography, uh, getting photos of those, please be careful. There will be high tides and high waves with it to come. Um, it is looking like it will clear up, though. Um, that rain, though, when it comes, it will start to move northwards over us up to north of England, and then it will rotate and then come back down again to us uh, throughout tomorrow. And then hopefully by 10 o'clock tomorrow night, it should all have disappeared. But, yes, just be careful, especially southwest tonight. Batten down the hatches, put your garden furniture away. It will blow away, and your trampolines as well will probably blow away. Trampoline. Seventy-five miles in the winds. <laughs> Trampoline. Have you seen the video? Have you seen the video from a storm a couple of years back? And there's a, a guy, a Scottish guy, looking out the window, and he just goes, "Trampoline, trampoline." <laughs> there's a massive... Oh no, I've not seen that one. No. It's a beautiful, very short, little, very amusing video. Oh, Sonia, I'll have, to have a look at that. What's the name of the storm? It's called Storm Everett. 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 How do you spell that? E V E R T. E V E R T. Yes. That well-known name. Sto oh my God! I hadn't even heard about Storm Everett. That's crazy. Oh dear, Cornwall's about to get battered. They are. They could already um, start to have been hit with that. Um, the rain certainly should, would have started at the moment. The eye of the storm is sort of southwest at the moment, but then it will hit at least one, two o'clock tomorrow morning properly. Ooh. Move. So it will move westwards. But with how big the storm is, we will get the rain as well um, everywhere. Well, all of England will literally see some rain, which it will move west, move eastward, sorry, um, throughout um, tomorrow, leaving us a dry night tomorrow night. So please be careful out there. Um, Vernon says he enjoyed your book recommendation, The Cloud Spotters Guide. It's a good book, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is a really good book, yes, definitely. Well done, um, well done. <laughs> it is going to be pretty much the same next week as well. Um, it's just certainly start of next week. Saturday, Friday is particularly just forget Friday, cloud, wash out. Saturday isn't looking too bad. It's probably the southwest, southeast, and the middle that will see rain. Elsewhere will be clear by about 11 o'clock. Met Wales. Some parts of northern England may get some low cloud. Ireland will be cloudy apart from the south of Ireland. Um, northern Scotland will be clear, western and eastern. But then where Edinburgh is, anywhere south of Edinburgh, should see some showers and cloud. But Saturday for England, not looking too bad for the telescopes at the moment. Um, we're going to Sunday night. It's going to be pretty the same. It should clear and give some um, clear spells by the evening again it will the cloud will linger in the northwest and scotland and ireland looks cloud as well but pretty decent night um for sunday and going through to monday it's looking to exactly the same and um, the southwest south of england will get those clouds and rain it will be a bit more low cloud in the midlands but the england's not looking too bad at the moment um again edinburgh 
will see some cloud. Ireland's cloudy and Northern Scotland's cloudy. It's it's more in the way of cloud at the moment than the rain, so it is still going to be dry. Going on to Tuesday night, it is looking at the best night of the week next Tuesday. Um, a bit of cloud in Wales, um, but it is looking like it will be the clearest night next week. And oh, God, Wednesday, no, no, no. it's looking a lot more cloudier. Oh, um, Northern England, oh, looking a bit more rainier, Scotland and Ireland. So it is hitting with the showers. But next Tuesday is looking like the best day of the week so far. It was supposed to be nice today and tomorrow. However, Storm Everett has appeared. Um, and when it comes to actually naming storms, um, when I last read it, um, the, the Met Office asked the public for names. So the public put names forward and they choose the best names. Um, however, the American storms, I come over here, American, name, American names those. But when they come over to UK, we don't change their names. They are kept as American names. And that's how the storms are usually named. Well, you might just be lucky enough. Thank you, Sonia, for that doom cast. You might just be lucky to do an early Perseid through the clouds. Yeah. yeah, so they have started. You can see the odd one now start to show. And then they do um, they do peak on the 12th to the 13th of August. Okay. Well, I think we might be doing a Friday show next week, Sonia, if you're around for that, to celebrate the Perseids. Yeah, I can certainly see Friday night's my usual 10k run. Um, I am going to have to train. I'm training a lot more than that now because my half marathon is slowly creeping up on me on the 26th of September. So anyone wants to sponsor me, check my Facebook, check my Twitter, click the link. Oh, Doesn't matter okay. how small or large a donation, any any money will help. And it is all towards the Christie's um, Charity Hospital in Manchester who research um, to help. Uh, fight battle cancer Sonia that's amazing uh, you just send me the link and I will sponsor you Spon Cl Cosmo will sponsor you as well <laughs> thank you he said he's going to give you 500 quid uh. <laughs> what's that uh, he knows my pin number right be careful <laughs> oh okay uh, let's see Storm Sonia and Storm Vicky yeah we are the Storm Sisters Brown Woo! and our puppy goats Great show. Sorry, I've got to go. Kids are killing each other. Oh, oh well, no. Oh, dear. Uh, Bob says, very interesting talk, Sonia. Look forward to it next week. Lovely, lovely. Yes. Sonia, have so, you got any cat, cats with you tonight? No, they're all in tonight. Um, they, they, yeah, they're not, not being very sociable tonight. Bob was in early and so was Katie after my chicken and ham. And then they sort of went afterwards. Oh, so what, <laughs> are you going to do a presentation for us next week, Sonia? Or are you... We are, so I, I'm thinking we'll look at, um, we've done Asteroids and Meteors, so I think we'll follow on um, with comets next week, Ooh. as they lead to, as of course, you know, when the Earth, as we are, going into um, Pursuit with, is it Comet Swift Tuttle? We're, we're sort of going into debris of that, and of course, comets cause uh, meteor showers for us, so I thought I'd do comets next week. Gwyneth is asking, which half marathon are you doing? Oh, so it's the uh, Greater Manchester Half Marathon. Um, it's my third one. So I'm hoping to beat my previous time of three hours. <laughs> oh, that's amazing that you can even do a half marathon. It's very impressive. <laughs> now then, can you see this little thing here? Oh, that's nice. Well, do you know what it is? It's called... Well, it's available in the SPA shop. Now... Uh, when I first started doing the show, I got sent a lovely bundle of... Can you hear the seagull? <laughs> Probably not. There is a seagull. Uh, I got I got sent a lovely bundle of goodies from Kath, our, um, our merchandise officer, and I didn't wear this. Um, it's the sundial, right? You see? Oh, yeah. And I've not wear I've not worn it. I don't know why. Um, I should maybe start wearing it. It's because I got a different necklace at the time, and I thought it was going to be complex instructions. And I used it the other day, and Sonia, it's so incredibly accurate. Like almost to the minute, it's accurate. You can tell wow. what time it is almost to the minute, and it's dead easy. I mean, you need a compass to point south for you, so you use your phone. But you just point you point it south like that, and there's a tiny little dot of light appears on on the dial 
And it's accurate. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. It was such a little, cute little novelty. And it's called the Hypatia or Hypatia Sundial. Uh, it's a model in a model inspired by the character of Hypatia of Alexandria, the first female astronomer who standed out in several science fields, uh, such as astronomy and mathematics by the end of the fourth century century. So it's beautiful that that is such a lovely little thing. Oh. Um, and there you go. So there we go. We always have a really poor month for seeing hope ever will bring down some northerlies and clear skies. Okay, Vernon. Um, and um, Liam says, I had different versions of my body has completed two times marathons and doesn't. Well done, Liam. Oh, nice. Well done. There, there is a 10K taking place the first time at Alton Towers. Oh, wow. I am tempted to do that one as it is quite pricey, but you get free rides for the rest of the day. But I don't fancy traveling two hours down on a Sunday morning to do a 10K. <laughs> oh, I don't think it's... Uh, like, what time does it start? It's a long way to Alton Towers. It's, it is. It's half nine in the morning. Oh. So it's... And, yeah, start. I don't fancy getting up at that time to do a, a 10K around Alton Towers. Oh. All right. Okay, Jed says, good reception tonight. Sonia, have you sorted your cable out? Yeah, yes. Well, I'm not actually using a cable tonight. I did one last night. Um, last week I used one, um, but it was for work for Peter. So um, I've asked him to order me one where it, it goes directly to the router, which it goes into this little dongle, which goes to my phone. So my phone is directly connected to the router, which was last week. So I'm hoping um, to get one of those through the post for next week. Oh, do you know what? I've said I was going to go out and look for glowworms and I'm blooming freezing now because I'm half sat outside and it's like sometimes, you know what, this year I've just not done any astronomy. I've not done anything. I've just been going to bed early and enjoying sleeping. <laughs> you, Sonia, you have been doing some fantastic observing lately. Just give us a quick lowdown on what you've been up to and then we'll disappear. So my, my main observing is mostly the moon. So um, I've tried to capture images of moon for its phases so i don't know if anyone's seen my twitter and facebook oh, posts i've amazing. got um managed to capture it going through uh, from start from a crescent for a quarter through half um and then into a full moon um so it's took me ages to do that i've had to take some photos from previous months uh, but july i've got most of the photos from this month to do a moon phase collage which looks quite good it's my first one i've ever 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 done Oh, Sonia, you are such a little ray of sunshine, Sonia. Cosmo loves you too. We'll both sponsor oh, you. Oh, I love you, Cosmo. Ah, uh, but um, what about me? I love you too, Vicky. Ah, thank you. Oh, it's just so lovely to hear that. I love everybody. I love you all. Oh. Right, okay. Well, stay on the line, Sonia. We'll have a quick natter after you've um, finished, um, after we've pressed the off button. It takes about five seconds when I've pressed the off button to actually cut off. So I just sit there smiling like that until I know it's gone. <laughs> That's the tip. Uh, let's see. We're getting the good nights. Uh, the good, the good nights from people. Thank you for another great show, Vicky, Sonia, and Eleni. Thank you. There's been a lot of Cosmo love tonight. Oh, thank you, Liam. And we love Liam. Oh, Liam. <laughs> there we go, everybody. Your photos are excellent. You need to publish a book. Wow. Oh. <laughs> we buy it. We buy oh, it. And, and just uh, previously to Ian's, um, comment with regards to photos and telescopes um all you need to all i do is put my phone up to the eyepiece um zoom it in a little so it's got all the photo or the moon into the um phone and then you just focus the telescope um and that focuses it in your phone and just quickly take photos and then I just put it through my phone and did editing with like the brightness, the sharpness and that. And that's how I get my moon photos. So I don't have anything fancy really to take photos. The, my phone takes better photos than when I started with my D, my actual Canon. So I don't use my Canon anymore. I just use my phone. Oh, you have got a pretty hefty telescope though. <laughs> I would love a bigger one, but Peter's like, no. We have no room. We have no room in the house for two telescopes. And oh. the heavier it is, people are like, no. 
Well, Sonia, next time I'm in the Northwest, I'll come up and do a show with yours again because it was brilliant doing a show with you. Yeah, and well, you've, you've got a cable as well. Peter's bought a cable that can go into your laptop directly. Hey, okay, everybody. Uh, oh, Steve's saying not even a phone bracket. No, I do it. I, I have a phone bracket, one of those Nexus phone brackets, but I just don't get on with it. And I just literally very, very sturdy hand um with my phone so no phone brackets i just i'll do it all handheld um well done sonia very steady hand um jay has messaged to say very good show thank you jay that's kind of you i'm new to the spa and astronomy but enjoy finding planets with binoculars now jay this is the whole purpose of the spa to help curious people like you uh, flourish in astronomy so we've got lots of beginner sections on the website the magazine that comes out every couple of months is designed to accelerate your learning curve we've got a very very welcoming community of experts and amateurs just here to help you really really enjoy your hobby it's a really welcoming group um when meetings start up again hopefully soon who knows uh, we would love to welcome you but for the meanwhile jay welcome to the spa hey uh, yeah, oh, I'm gone. Ray says Hypatia was the only known significant female scientist of ancient times and was murdered by. Oh, well, there you go. Well, let's not have that. No, let's not have that. Poor lady. Um, okay. Oh, wow. There are so many more. I use binoculars more than a telescope. I tell you, it's very good you to follow. Still, you can still take photos with binoculars. I have 75 by um, 100 binoculars. Um, you do need an extremely sturdy telescope, but you can still do exactly the same. Um, just put the photo, just put your phone through the binoculars eyepiece, and you can do exactly the same with that. I used to do it with my binoculars before I started using the telescope again, so it's still doable. Oh, and we've got an online SPA meeting on Saturday. So check your emails for that one. That Oh, it's so nice. Look at all these comments coming in. Oh, we have always left. We are left. We have fans. Oh, that's so sweet. Everybody, thank you. Good night. And I always want to say God bless. And then I realise that just doesn't sit well. It's just because I'm used to saying it. We should, do like a, we should do like a duo. It's good night from her. And it's good night from her and him. <laughs> that... <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, well, the chat and don't want you to go. Okay. Well, tell you what, we'll stay on for another five minutes. Then it's not like it's eating any meat, is it? <laughs> What's the best shooting sky I've ever seen, Sonia? Tell me. Oh, I've not seen that many shooting stars, to be honest. Um, I am one of those early birds that by midnight, come midnight, I'm off to bed for the for up early for work in the morning. So I'm usually up very late when it's um, a weekend meteor shower. <laughs> I have several amazing coincidences with shooting stars. And the first was when I saw a fireball in Turkey go across the sky. And then a couple of months later, when I was back home in Cheshire, I was telling my friend about it on the phone. And I said, I saw this amazing big shooting star. It had a really glittering tail and precisely the same one went across the sky as I was telling a friend about it. Wow. Isn't that weird? That is really weird. And I did then, see two amazing rainbows yesterday, though. I don't know if anybody, you know, we had those thundery downpours yesterday. We had thunder, lightning, hailstones. We had a lot here. And then by the evening, there was just one little, literally just scraping by the side of us. Um, so I got a little three second um, time lapse of like a towering cumulus cloud. And then just as so I was doing a time lapse on the front, just see if I can catch some, catch some line and get all went to pop that we didn't work very well. So I expected it to this amazing brightest ever rainbow I've ever seen in my life appear with a double bow. I was like, oh! so I had to stop my time lapse and get this, this, this photo of this miraculous rainbow yesterday. Wow. Well, actually you had some weather pandemonium there in Manchester. The lightning did something rather naughty. It did. Uh, just, it, it hit, actually hit um, Trafford General Hospital. Um, which set the roof on fire and um, patients had to be relocated to different parts of the hospitals. And um, it wasn't a very good sight to see when it was on BBC Northwest last night. So hopefully um, that's all safe now. And of course, with there being a hole in the roof, um, the hospital got flooded as well with the amount of rain they had. Oh my God, that's awful. It is dreadful, especially with a, well, you don't want it to any house, but with a hospital, it's probably even worse. Whoa, okay, I didn't realise it got flooded as well. That must have just been a nightmare. 
Yeah. It was. Right, actually, my ring light just looks like one giant fly. Some women were stuck by snow. What? Were they really? I didn't hear that. Did you hear that, Sonia? I didn't hear that, no. Wow. Was that yesterday? Oh Blimey, nearly swore I'm a little bit then. Wow. Google that. Wow, 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 wow. You now, just don't go on hills, don't. When you know it's forecast storms, you just don't do it. Oh my god, I mean, oh, well, yes, so most... two women hit by lightning strike on Welsh mountain summits. Wow, I did not hear that. I didn't know about that either. The most seriously injured had blood running down the side of her face, was falling in and out of unconsciousness. Ah, it is believed okay. neither of the women are in life threatening conditions. Well, that's good to hear. Whoa, but yes, you, you just it's just like if you know it's going to be thunderstorms and you can see one boo and you, you just don't head up a mountain because you are going to be the highest point of that mountain. So the lightning is going to positively come down and hit you. How to be a lightning conductor, go up a mountain. Yes, you are going to be the tallest, I mean, Snowden being the tallest mountain in Wales and you're going to be taller than that mountain. You are going to get conducted by lightning and get struck. So that is really silly of them to do that but i'm glad they have you know they're not life-threatening conditions with those that's just like oh uh, right listen my ring light which is a giant ring can you oh hang on wait a minute that oh i can't get it on the picture basically it's starting to attract the gnats now or the midges or whatever they are so um i am starting to get little bites on my face so i think i'm gonna go away now i'm gonna go and catch up with a program as well that i missed yesterday which um i really wanted to watch with chris pa chris pa uh, walking with chris packham about you know mental health and I missed, oh. it. I, mean, I, I missed it yesterday, so I'm going to catch up on that on iPlayer. Do you know what a spoonerism is, Sonia? It's where you whittle up your merds. Okay. Yeah, so you get the, get the merds whittled up. And <laughs> if you start thinking about Chris Packham's name, you can get yourself in a hell of a mess. And I'll just leave it there. <laughs> All right, everybody. Lots of love to you all. Thank you. We did stay on just for you, Steve. Okay. Ah, uh, you'll just have to get watch. There's about fifty hours of reruns, Jim, for you to watch. Start binge watching right from the start, where we didn't have light, we didn't have equipment, <laughs> we didn't have a backdrop, and there was no Sonia. And I used to have three experts in one hour. Those days have long gone now. So go back, do the back catalogue. Good night, everybody. Thanks for all your lovely comments. You really, really do make us feel wonderful. Good night. Night, everyone. Bye.